my name is Roger Sadana and I'm one of the co-founders of EGMAT. In this video, I'm going to talk about a 750 journey. So let's kind of start with some stats. In the year 2021, about 100 people reported scores of 750 or higher on GMAT Club. Most of those people were very smart. The journey in question, uh, Akshat's journey that is, is very interesting because in my opinion, this journey is driven more by diligence than by intelligence. And what makes this interesting is because his journey is driven more by diligence, there are things from his journey that you can um, uh, you can adapt in, in, in your journey and see a corresponding score improvement. So if this is something that's important to you, I want to make sure that you click on the information icon above and register for the session. And if you want to make sure that you get a reminder, I also want to um, make sure you add this event to your calendar so that you get a reminder in that relevant time zone. So let's talk about why this is an interesting journey. Um, journey. Um, to do that, I want to talk about why is this not a unique journey. So the reason why this is not unique is not because he had excellent stats, which he did, uh, and which most 750 scorers do, or that he did really good in what we call a cementing quizzes in, in, in various subsections. That's something which you know most 750 scorers do. Or because he was extremely consistent when it came to, um, to, to taking mocks or, or scoring on mocks, although he did mess up over here. Or because he did really well on, on GMAT Verbal, uh, despite being a non-native, um, 96 percentile or 94th percentile is an excellent score. In my opinion, the reason why this is a relevant journey for you and an interesting journey for you is because of these four attributes um, that, that he displays. First of all, um, Akshat imbibed really good habits throughout his journey, which ensured that he would succeed on um, on, on the GMAT and the stats that you saw above were an outcome of those habits. So they weren't the cause, they were actually an outcome of these habits and we're going to talk these habits and we're going to talk about these habits. Now Akshat's journey was six months long and and throughout this his journey he took notes in a manner that he could revise those notes very easily and this is something that we're going to talk about and this is something in my opinion that you should really take away from this journey if there's one thing that you would. Um, now, when Akshat came to us, he was really good on GMAT Quant, yet he knew there were some gaps. So Akshat was brutally honest with himself, so um, he went through the GMAT Quant course, and because of the pace architecture, he only did the relevant parts of the course, and because of which he was able to improve from a Q49 to a Q50. One of the other things that Akshat did really well was a, a strategic review. Akshat didn't solve a ton of questions, but with for uh, every question that he solved, he spent five to 10 minutes reviewing why he got it wrong, if he did get it wrong. And this helped him a lot in that 640 attempt, which was a couple of weeks before um, his final GMAT date. He was able to do that strategic review and figure out, strategic review and figure out that, that that 640 attempt wasn't a true representation of, of his abilities. Now the 750 attempt wasn't Akshat's first attempt, it wasn't even his second attempt, but it was the attempt in which he solved the fewest questions, it was the attempt in which um, in which he was most certain to succeed. Um, if you want to understand how did Akshat achieve that 750 score, make sure you register for the session and or add this event to your calendar. With that, as I always say, happy learning. learning.